Mitch, uh, wanted to talk expectations. Um, this team that they're high from the, from an outside perspective, with a lot of people believing this roster and this team can win the division. Inside the, the building, what are the expectations for this team? Uh, I mean, I think inside this building, um, just because we're talented on paper, I feel like there's an onus for us to make sure that um, we don't buy into the hype. And uh, we got to come in with an, a sense of urgency every day because I, I can speak for myself. Um, I got a lot of work to do. I got a lot to work on. I got a lot of work on with my guys. And um, that's exciting, but also at the same time, it's, uh, I mean, you got you to get on these horses, man. You got to giddy up because it's, uh, you know, it's game week. And um, it comes, it, it definitely helps with, coming in with a purpose every day. And I think that's the big thing is everyone's got to come with a purpose to get better and to fix the things that we're not doing too hot at. Uh, we've talked to guys last year, years before, the underdog chip on the shoulder has seemed to be the rallying mentality amongst this team because it's always been viewed as an underdog. How challenging is it to, to flip that switch and, and find that fuel now that people actually have much higher expectations? Yeah, I think for us, we just have to keep everything uh, internal in this organization. Uh, just, I think for us, um, we'll still have that underdog mentality in regards to work ethic, um, coming in with something to prove. And you got to do that every day at work. And um, we have a, a lot of dudes who are hungry to get better um, and not afraid to ask for help. And that's going to be very important. Uh, as you know, there's ebbs and flows in games. There's ebbs and flows in seasons. Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably hit some road bumps early on. Um, that won't be deterring, you know, because the, the fans are going to be high and low. It's what they do. It's fine. Uh, but for us, we got to stay even keel through the ups and downs uh, and progressively try to get better every week. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. What's up, Mitch? Matt Perino here. Uh, thanks for taking some time today. Um, you know, I, wanted, I was curious about, you know, your impressions of the job that Cody's done throughout training camp and where, where he's kind of at in terms of, you know, being ready to kind of do whatever Sean and, you know, the coaching staff asked him to do when, when things get started here. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that's, a, that's a guy who I felt like got an unfair rap last year. I think as a rookie, you, have a, you come in and start as an offensive lineman. It's a tough position as a rookie, and then it's a tough position even, you know, double fold as an offensive lineman, I thought he played admirably. Um, he was a guy who knows his stuff, comes in knowing the game plan. Why is, among, uh, why is above his years in regards to football understanding and understanding this offense? Um, he's a guy who's flexible in regards to where the coaches put him, doesn't complain, comes in, and he's just a workhorse. And you guys seen him, he's got an attitude on the field that's uh, unparalleled. Maybe on you know, John Feliciano, maybe the only guy. So, um, but, a bit, I'm a big fan of Cody, and he helps me a ton. And you don't usually see that as a, as a second-year guy helping out the vets like he does. He's, he's, a, he's a workhorse and a dude who always knows his stuff, and uh, that's all you can ask for. When you look over and see him on, on your side there, you know, I know everybody has their certain strengths, but what do you notice just on the field when you're playing next to him, like what he brings? Uh, he brings a competitive nature, a nasty football player that uh, – loves ball and he, he loves to work and um silent dude's not going to be a rah-rah guy but uh comes in and you know what technique he's going to use because he's been coached that way and um yeah he's dependable which is uh fantastic thanks mitch yeah you're welcome hey mitch that brown wrlc in rochester good to see you thanks for doing this you're um welcome. you know we, we talked all off season about all the things that were going to be missed because of, of COVID and all the restrictions and catching up and being behind. Now that that's all done and we're to a game week, how much further behind do you feel now than you would the last few years getting ready for a season? Um, yeah, I mean, I was talking to someone, you know, preseason is one of those necessary evils. No one wants to play preseason games, but they do help with the speed. Um, you know, for us, I think the biggest thing is cutting down that acclimation period. Uh, you know, week one, we know the bullets will be flying, the speed will be amped up, but uh, we'll have to make game time adjustments um, and try to come out and uh, compete. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I think this first few weeks, this first week, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be smooth sailing for anyone. Um, but the teams that can adjust to come out and keep a level head are the teams that are going to succeed. And uh, I think we have everything in place to do that. We just have to 
uh, double down on, on game day. Yeah, we hear a lot in preseason that often the defense gets ready or, or gets acclimated faster than the offense does. Do you think maybe the result of that will be lower scoring games or more defense dominated games first two, three weeks of the year? Yeah, I, I wish I could tell you. This, this league surprises me every year with, uh, you know, certain teams put up certain numbers. And, um, you know, that's, that's a good thought. Um, I'm sure we'll see. But uh, who, God, who knows in this league? You know, I mean, we'll just see what happens and uh, we'll, try, we'll try to execute to the best of our ability. Just one more follow up to do. Is there a, when we say, when you talk about being behind, is there a certain level that you're still at? Like, do you feel you're at a mid-August level, or, or is it is that is not really a way that you can't really quantify it that way? Yeah, you know, I, I you can't really quantify it because um, we are progressively getting better every day, every week. You can feel it. Um, it's just you feel like you've messed up just a little bit on those game reps. You know, I mean, there's some things. It's it's hard to say. It's it's not tangible. I can't show it to you, but there's something that you get from playing a game, but. Um, everyone's in the same boat. Everyone understands that. So it's not like one team has competitive advantage in that regards over another. So we'll just have to come out and execute with the best of our ability. Thanks, Mitch. Appreciate it. Welcome. Hey, Mitch. Uh, Kevin Sylvester, uh, Channel 2. Uh, I love that watch. Look at that watch. <laughs> Thank you. Fancy watch, buddy. Great. Um, Wondering about your pre uh, preparation at this camp without Star there, you know, the caliber of defensive tackle he was. and for the interior guys and, and perhaps how Ed has stepped up to help the offensive line in their preparation for the season. Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of Star, uh, consummate professional, um, the guy who made a really tough decision. And uh, it's an admirable one. He's got a bunch of young kids. He's got a family and um, we respect his decision, but you definitely miss the kind of guy that, you know, the intensity, or just the, he's a smart football player, tough, strong as hell. Uh, gap sound so uh, he's definitely a presence on the defense missed but I think like you said guys like Ed and we've got Quentin Jefferson, Vern Butler, all these guys have come in and um, you know picked up where Star has left off and um, feel very good about our defense just because playing against them has been such a nightmare at times so uh, it's a good thing but like you said uh, it's a great question Star is a hell of a football player and we, we, we're definitely missing his presence. Yeah if I could follow that up but how's it help you um, in prep, preparing since you didn't get to face anybody else in the, in the preseason, uh, having the quality defense that you guys face in practice and scrimmage, how much does it help to have that caliber of players across from you? Immensely. It's, uh, it's immensely helpful. And, um, you know, everyone tries to make as competitive as training camp as possible. I think that was, was amplified this year on that just because these are the only looks we're going to get. Um, and I think that our defense, our new, new defensive line coaches, a stud. Uh, he's got these guys humming on all cylinders, and um, it's been a, a very competitive training camp. And I can feel like everyone's gotten better. Um, I can definitely speak for myself, but those guys are giving me great looks, and uh, it's been fun to compete every day with those guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Mitch. Jenna Cottrell in Rochester. Just had a question about Josh. Now that you've seen him, you know, going another year, what's kind of your takeaway? Is there kind of a notable difference in Josh, whether it be his leadership style or anything on the field that you've seen? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think his uh, huddle presence, it's calm, it's precise, it's decisive. Uh, it's everything you want out of a quarterback. When a quarterback walks in, I've said this before, when a quarterback walks in the huddle and you can feel the confidence in the play call, the guy is speaking to every position as the play play call progresses um you can see it in his eyes and, and and when you have that i don't know moxie or you have that presence not so much moxie but presence and calmness about what's going on um that resonates with everyone else you have a quarterback comes in uh you know antsy or anything and not that he was last year but um you know as years progress especially as a quarterback uh, the nfl is a tough gig as the quarterback position and he's taking everything with grace and Hopefully we've helped him out a little bit more, um, you know. But to answer your question, just his huddle presence and his poise, even when, you know, because our, our defense is very good at throwing different things at him, uh, making adjustments. So a uh, great decision. Um, and just a quick follow-up. I know it might be hard to answer this question based on no preseason games, but is there a guy that's kind of stood out to you that maybe we haven't talked about in terms of the media or someone that's kind of under the radar that's kind of, um, surprised you or just kind of stood out to you? Um, I can only speak for my room, you know, offensive line room. 
Uh, and it's tough because I think every guy's got his strengths and every guy's improved. I think a guy, uh, Ryan Bates, someone that sticks out to me, um, a guy who's uh, really come out, competed, gotten better, and um, earned himself a roster spot. And uh, congratulations to him. And that's fun to have him around. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mitch Morris, Wookie Hawkins, 12 Force 1080. Uh, how you doing, man? Good, buddy. How are you? I'm good. Hey, you know what's crazy is that, no. that, that, that rainbow in your background, I walked out the other day while that was going down. It was pretty gnarly to see in person. It was, it's a cool deal. Uh, yeah, see, like Orchard Park is like four seasons in like one day. You know, it might snow or rainbow or rain. You know, it's going to be 90 degrees. So, you know, you're getting There's the no best of uh, all the seasons right now up there. <laughs> yeah, not to throw you off. I just, I just thought I'd get, give you a... A piece of knowledge. Hey, not a problem, man. It's, it, hey, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful shot. You know what I mean? But uh, speaking really of beautiful, man, this offense, this offense here, Mitch, you know, is 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 put together, you know, quite well. And um, you know, you got my cousin, you got my uncle, and a few friends. You know, we're gonna say the names to protect the innocent over here on this right side. But uh, how comfortable are you with those guys at this point? Um, so the offensive lineman, the offensive yes, lineman, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel very comfortable with my guys. And uh, one thing about you know professional football uh, is that throughout the year, guys might have to plug and play at different positions. And training camp, guys are put in positions to show the team that they, that they can do. And I thought a lot of guys were able to, to do that with grace. Um, you know, we plug and play different dudes and um, feel very comfortable with a group of guys. Not to mean, not, that doesn't mean we don't have a lot of work to do still to put our best foot forward every week. Um, I feel like we have that burning desire to get better. Um, but I think you have to have that trust. And I think the big thing, make maybe the word trust over comfortable, I trust these guys. Uh, if you get too comfortable, that's when stuff goes south. I trust these dudes and that lets you play free. I trust everyone on this offensive line. And uh, it's hard, hard to say sometimes, but I, I really do. Absolutely, you know, just being the center, you know, you're the center of attention. So, you know, you orchestrate on both sides. So just wanted to get your take on that. And uh, finally, man, you know, week one versus the Jets. What are the expectations offensively for this team? Um, you know, I think for us, well, you know, it's a good question. I think the easy thing to say is score points. Um, but it's to put our team in the best position to win the football game, no matter what that means. Uh, every week is different. Um, we understand that the opponent we're going against is, is, a, is a tough opponent with a Greg Williams at the helm, who's an uh, established defensive coordinator who really makes your job difficult. Um, so we, we know we have a great challenge ahead, and for us it's just matching the competitive nature and, uh, and what they throw out at us. And, we'll, uh, you know, there'll be ebbs and flows in the game, but we'll have to go out there and take care of business, and um, it'll be a great competitive matchup. Uh, we'll finally get to play football, and that'll be fun. Absolutely. Hey, we can't wait for those great businesses to be made on week one. And uh, good luck versus the Jets. Okay, Mitch? Thank you.